could come through Tsapot Sola, Sanko Mota, Saikumbulaga, Makawe, Tom Ulo, Begam Nandi, Gingomo, you're waiting for your name to be called out. Welcome back as we continue our journey into the life and the times of Utata Nelson Mandela. And today with the world still reacting to Madiba's death and also the tributes that are still pouring in, it's impossible not to think about how powerful music can be uh, when it is used as a tool of engagement. Now, thinking back, you also realize that throughout his entire history, Mandela's message was spread through music, his name was kept alive by the sounds of music and also the sounds of the times. Storytelling is part of our tradition and our culture and it's, it runs through our veins and the arts in general and music in particular was a powerful instrument that was used to speak out against the injustices and the atrocities <coughs> of the then apartheid regime. Tonight we're in the presence of greatness, Ubabu Hot Sticks Mabose is in studio with us. <laughs> Baba, we are humbled. Great royalty, did you greatness. Say that? I did, Tata Wam, because and I, I think echo that. you know, <laughs> and I think through your humility as as one of the great leaders, you you didn't understand the the impact you had because our political leaders were incarcerated. They had no means to get to us. Their messages mm. were being blocked by the then apartheid regime due to our dispensation. And here you were, our mouthpieces, to say, How did that responsibility weigh? Yeah. That's a weighted question, Nati. Uh, uh, I must I must say that Uguti, our real our role frankly was not as as uh, as profound as you know about data and especially the ones who were on Robin Island and prison and all those who were exiles and uh, exiled and so on. I think Tina were encouraged by the fact that uh, we we had profiles that were not easily could be suppressed. Even though some of the music that we made was not overtly political because of exactly what you mentioned, uh, the state of emergencies, the, the repressive environment in which we had to write songs. So we were able to write songs covertly so that, uh, you know, when you are a you know. Mm -hmm. So we were crivelling our way through these songs so that people who, who were involved in the struggle would understand exactly what we're saying. Until such time that, you know, in the 80s, when we, we, we were emboldened by activities of uh, MK, uh, ANC, and so on, the UDF, and so on. So that in invariably made, it, made us bold enough to begin to write directly, and we were overtly political. Mm. Yeah. Did, did you ever get a feeling though, we are figure Robin Island. You know, yeah, that's very that's actually a very interesting uh, uh, question, Robert, because uh, the first person to come to me was Utokyo Squal when he came out of prison. Mm. Because we didn't even think that they were watching TV or they listening to radio or anything like that. He says, hey, man, because, I, you know, I was privileged enough to have known him even before he went to yes. Robben Island. And his brothers were friends of mine. So when he came out of prison, one of the first places to come to was to come to my house to speak about what, you know, how Babu Sisulu, Dada, mm -hmm. and all the other political prisoners were responding to our music. In particular, you know, Ishigish. Mm. Because apparently what the, the video depicted was exactly how they, they saw the New South Africa. They had never seen black and white people dance together. And suddenly there it was on... on, on t For me, when I did that, I was celebrating. I was celebrating the, the new day. I didn't even think that it was anything that had to do with the future politics. But hey... I guess wow. I, I, I was. I predicted something that I didn't think would ever happen. <laughs> but but uh, there were many things we couldn't predict at the time, you know. And the regime at the time would give us blow after blow after blow. You made reference to the state of emergency. A lot of people leaving and, and going away, exile. The sanctions that were imposed on our country. But I think the one that we didn't see coming, and I think something that we will never understand. And a lot of the born frees can't even wrap their minds against. What is a South Africa? that is not allowed to say 
Mandela. Chew. I know, I know. That you know, I, I, you know as you rightly say, the bond frees. Uh, we wish they could just understand what it was like to live under apartheid. Just the fact, you know, the indignation of not having carried a pass. Mm. You know, you don't carry a pass. You walk to to school, and you see your father has been arrested for a pass, and they call you. Can you imagine to to produce the pass as well? If you don't have, mm -hmm. there you are arrested with your father because you don't have a pass, and you're made to stand in a row like that. And some of those things. And I think people think uh, it was romantic to decide to go and carry guns. Mm. People didn't easily make those decisions. Mm. People were forced to make those decisions that the only way we can re uh, relieve ourselves of this is either we are dead mm. or we will fight to free ourselves. And I, I'm here to say that many of them did die. Mm. But, you know, we were always hopeful. We knew that it could never go on like that forever. Sure. And, and, and I think one thing that we've seen, and, and other artists as well, and I don't want to make you a representative of them, but Abo Chico were able to disguise music. We miss you, Manelo. Yes. We, we kind of went on with that, but there yeah. was a deeper meaning to we miss Absolutely. you, Mandela. Chico, Chico, Chico was a serious revolutionary. <laughs> you know, a lot of people don't even know, you know, and um, Chico was really an activist. Yeah. You know, even though he may have been writing songs covertly, but there were other, other, other underlying things that Chico was involved with in terms of what the struggle was all about. Real serious stuff now, mm. not just music, but that we'll talk about when he decides to write his book. <laughs> <laughs> One day. Talking about writing a book, do you think the message was received? Um, yes. I think people were beginning to... People were ready. Mm. People were ready. People were very conscious. People were aware. And you must also remember that uh, while while the, the, this great leadership was in prison, also emerged amongst us young leaders like Steve Biko. You know. So as much as people thought we were we we were we were not aware, we were not conscious. Those people, you know, awoken the 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 Africanness, the consciousness in us, the Diros and so on. And those people were part of a, a, a lineage of leadership that South Africa had. And uh, there was no way that the, the, the oppression could have gone on. Even today, after Steve Biko died, there would have been others. Mm -hmm. There was Zietz, mm -hmm. you know. So the continuous, in, you know, the continuous uh, 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 opposition to apartheid was always a groundswell for us. For instance, Mac's father, mm. Matsunela Manaka, who was a poet, uh, an artist, those were kind of leadership that would call on, uh, you know, call on for us to say, guys, this struggle is not about guns only. The struggle is all about everything that is, uh, you know, that permeates our society. So we have to ensure that if every level we make this country ungovernable mm. such that freedom comes, freedom reigns. Oh. Freedom is reigning today yes. and here we are in Kosi <laughs> You'll be joining us later on for a beautiful tribute to Tata Wetu. And don't forget, South Africa, imagine a South Africa where we cannot mention the surname Mandela. How are we going to thank Utata for giving us that freedom, as well as the other freedom fighters who did their thing. And there you have it, South Africa, a testimony of how music was used at the time to spread Utata Madiba's message of peace and, more importantly, reconciliation. And obviously music played a very significant role in the release of Umadiba. And let's remind ourselves as well of the songs that gave people hope and the ones that one day that Mandela would be set free. Who would have thought? Free.
so sad to hear about Mfano Wakwazulu, Utatu Tani Clegg. He actually cried the morning, Friday morning, when he heard the news. He was called by one of our prominent radio stations to do the interview. He had not heard that Utata had passed on and he'd flown into the country. What a day, what a day, and who would ever forget the day that Otaita was released on the 11th of February, 1990. What a glorious day that was, what the messages was, and what the masses were doing and been wishing, dreaming, fighting, and of course praying for, finally came true on that monumental day. Rob? Do you know? Could you ever forget? Where were you? Uh, no, not at all. I think we all sort of were at school huddled around one little TV set. And because no one had seen Madiba's image or mm -hmm. face, and we had seen different paintings and people were getting it right, others were completely off the mark, uh, but everyone was guessing. And as the cars were approaching, I remember the voice of the then um, news person from the SABC, Clarence Cater, who was, uh, who was sort of taking us through. Yes. And you know that voice uh, still resonates within me now because it almost seems like yesterday when you when, when you reflect back onto those images here yeah, up until such time as he said it well there he is he merges and I think you Babsipo as well you remember that voice so uh, yes. as he was guiding us through waiting in anticipation come mm -hmm. the moment we all have been waiting for I remember those were the words that Clarence used there is all of us the world that the man has been waiting for here's the moment he's just emerged you know when i look at those visuals i wish it we could have been reversing those for now mm. you know yes. it feels mm. like we could say mm. reverse this this is what we'd mm. like to see ourselves experiencing mm. today where were you that one i was in the sutu we had a we were touring the sutu that day and of course the 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 announcement were when the announcement was made, I was still in Soweto. We, there was, you know, jubilation, elation, <laughs> jubilation <laughs> around the township. But then, of course, we had to be touring Lesotho. On the day that it was going to be released, mm. I said to the promoters, today, there is no show. <laughs> today, and the stadium was packed in Lesotho. So, and we decided to, you know, but I said, folks, who want to be passed by this history? Mm. Yeah. Because even yourselves, you won't be at the door to ensure that you collect your money. Mm. Mm. So let's rather cancel today's show and, and watch this experience. It was such a, a moving experience. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I think while we People were crying. Yeah, I know? think with the tears as well, that's why we're trying to encourage, again, everybody that's watching the show to <coughs> show us their thoughts and recollections of where they were when that magical moment happened. And you'd have seen as well from the visuals, uh, uh, the now deputy within the ANC, uh, Cyril Ramaphosa, right there at the side, then a trade unionist. Mm. Uh, but also, you know, somebody that came through, I mean, Mac w was reciting the poem early on, very magically, and he joins us here uh, as well. Mac, good to see you. And fantastic job. We'll get to your word. But I want to find out from you, when those visuals were coming out, where, where was Mac? Yeah, my name. I was seven years old, my brother, <laughs> actually. <laughs> uh, I think I was seven years old or eight years old, and nearly we were at home, and my mother just rushed, just, she just came from Funda Center, and she just rushed in and was like, hey, Arieng, Arieng, Emelang, Emelang, let's go outside, Rilo Celebrator, Motoso Otsuile, and Rilo Celebrator from Tueso, you know? Um, I mean, we were, we were a little bit confused, like, yo, know, I mean, hey, we were kids and everybody's uh, shouting and everybody's having fun. I mean, we ended up having fun, but we understood actually what, what, what was happening, you know? Um, I mean, it, what, 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 what my message was saying right now is actually it's, if we can take that to now, um, yeah, man, it was, it was a very interesting time because, I mean, for me personally, um, Yo, Marim, I mean, no holy monate, my brother. That's, that's the truth <laughs> that I can tell you. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I mean, it, it was fun. No holy monate. Finish and clap. Sure. What else are you going to say? Yeah. That's an honest account. <laughs> <laughs> you can't fault him for his honesty. And I think this is one of the things that Utata lived by. You know, he, he roared through his heart and he lived through his words. And this is something both of you, uh, Mac Nawe, Babu, Umabu, say, have in common is the art of storytelling. But also, we understand intrinsically and we could see it through the both of you that you feel the responsibility that comes with a gift that has been bestowed upon you with generations to come what well, do we do now oh. you too. In yeah course. Uh. In course. In course. how yeah. do we lead now hmm. how do we lead? how do we lead now Ish, my I sister think, I, I think much as everybody's been saying whatever we're saying on TV yeah. 
it's very important that we become conscious of ourselves, mm. first of all. Mm. What are we saying? What are we meaning? And dare we betray that legacy? Mm. Because now it, the responsibility is, you know, lies with all of us. Mm, sure. You know, it's all well and good for us mm. to appear here and say, yeah, oh, my diva mm. was this, my diva was sure. that. And, uh, you know, are we going to actually live by the way, you know, the man by lived, his yeah. actions, are we going to be responsible enough to carry his legacy beyond where it is? Mm. You know, the other day I was talking to, uh, to someone and I said, it would be very interesting to think 6,000 6, years ago, I don't know how long ago was this, when Moses passed on the baton to, to, to Aaron, mm. what happened after that? Mm. For us to, to juxtapose that and say, look at where the Jews are now. How, what have they achieved? Where did it all begin? And if there were, a, there were a tapestry along the way, how do they weave it such that it became what they are today in terms of what powered education, mm. scientists, and everything that you could imagine about them? Oh. Matiba now has left it to all of us and say, Whatever you, whatever you do with mm. it, Take it sure. is it's yours. Really sure. My sure. part has been laid. Sure. Sure. And also I just want to pick up from that because it's an interesting analogy that you're using. Yeah, and, and just to throw, and throw it to you, Mike, because you talk about seven years old or eight years old when he was mm. released. Mm. Now, looking at that time span to his passing now, what do you believe you would have gained from his existence that you've absorbed into yourself? that you are now going to try and implement moving forward for yourself and for the betterment of others? Uh, my brother, you know, one thing, especially Kilim Kanano, that I have learned from, 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 from uh, that is, is humility, mm -hmm. you know? And spending 27 years in prison is, is no joke, you know? Um, the man should have came out with, with revenge and hatred in his heart. But instead, he comes out and says, let us forgive. You know, and that for me, in all honesty, is, um, is it's, it's, it's integrity. Mm -hmm. You know, it shows it's a power. sense of humanity, humanity and humility as well. You know, humble yourself, children. And um, to add on to what Marwesi Po was saying just now, I think it's very important what we teach our children too, you know, and the history we teach mm -hmm. our children that we don't forget, that we remember, because a country without memory is like earth with no gravity. It, there's no stronghold, you know what I mean? So um, it is also to, to remember that there were people like Oliver Tambo, there were people like mm -hmm. Steve Biko, there were people like Robert Sobuka that contributed to the kind of country that we have today, mm -hmm. you know? Um, but one of the, one of the greatest, greatest, greatest greatness. It's uh, Santa Mandela, to be honest with, with you, it's, um, it's humility. And this yeah. is something that I carry with, you know. Um, kind of reminds me of my grandmother, actually. <laughs> you know, so it's, it's to be humble in anything that you do, you know, and to do it with all your heart. Yeah. And one of, the, one, one of the sayings that I really like, one of his, one of his quotes is that, um, I'm not a saint, I'm a sinner, that tries, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, and I'm sure yeah. we can all relate with that. We are not saints, man, you yeah. know. So many of us, we are sinners that are trying, though, you know. And I think for the mental health of, this, of, of the nation, it was important for Otata to allow us to emancipate ourselves mm. from that slavery yeah. because yeah. there's the physical freedom, but it was the emotional also freedom the emotional that we needed to be it. fed. Mm. Thank you so much for your great words Thank and your you. kindness and it's being so gracious. We understand that the entire nation is calling upon you to bless them <laughs> with their different City ways. like I'm for city, like <laughs> so, thank you very, very much indeed. And thanks as well uh, while you're sending through your messages, remembering the release. We're going to be taking you step by step as well. And as you know, Madiba leaving a lasting legacy and he touched our lives in one way or another. And it was also the U.S. President Barack Obama, the first black president of the United States, who said, and I'm one of the countless millions who drew inspiration from Nelson Mandela's life, I studied his words and his writings. He gave me a sense of what human beings can do when they are guided by their hopes and not by their fears. And when we return, we continue with the journey of Madiba, a leader and our hero. Stay with us. Mm -hmm.